ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to well, Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, Pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. to 
Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, and unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be Jesus Christ. Now and forever. These have been certainly a challenging few weeks for us all, and I must admit that your bishop now is most likely suffering, suffering from cabin fever as well. Um, I do have a chance to get out. I exercise, visit our nursing homes, of course, get to the office, pick up mail, drop off mail, different errands like that. But I could tell by recently listening to an instrumental score of the Barber of Seville by Rossini, and as I was listening to the song, all I could think of and envision was the rabbit of Seville and Bugs Bunny. I'm probably dating myself by saying that, but the bottom line is that, you know, our vision, our focus can be obscured at times. You, you think about St. Thomas, unfortunately getting that notoriety of being Doubting Thomas, even though the scores of people that he had converted going eastward is remarkable and probably immeasurable. But his vision was obscured probably from despair, duress. Their rabbi had died. And so perhaps it was going to take a lot, and it did take a lot, for him to completely understand that Jesus has resurrected from the dead. 
Now, I say that because you and I, certainly the quarantines, the stay-at-home orders that are here, the directives, they can put us under duress. Certainly, we could be in distress, depressed, and all of that can obscure our hope, our joy in the faith in Jesus Christ, who has risen from the dead. We have to confront that, be able to see Jesus in our homes, as I mentioned before, the crucifix, the various images, the divine mercy, which we celebrate today, divine mercy image. Don't we trust in him? We do. Blessed are they who have not seen and have believed. Jesus is speaking about us. He's speaking about us here in 2020. You see, the evangelist St. John wrote all this down, chronicling Jesus' life, his mission on earth, in this universe, so that you and I may believe, regarding, regardless of the situation, the good times, the bad, the gospel endures, the truth endures. Let Jesus in. In fact, the gospels, all four, were written down so that you and I may have life. Life in Jesus Christ. Today, as the gospel story tells us, speaks how the beginnings of the early church is here. And there's a lot of discord, a lot of challenges before them. And yet God unites Jesus, the Son of God, unites. The gift of the Holy Spirit will empower and enable, and that will make the church endure. We hear the story of the early church in the Acts of the Apostles, because the story today is reminding us our faith is always, always meant to live or be lived in community. You may say that's a bit ironic, Bishop, since we're all staying at home. Well, we do have the technology to unite. And when we take those walks around the block or wherever else, I think it's okay for us to say hello to others. We're still social beings, even if we are, and rightfully so, limited in our ability to encounter one another so that we can, of course, protect those at the greatest risk. We have that obligation. That is our act of charity, and there is no way around it. We need to reach out to our brothers and sisters who are at the greatest risk. And yet our faith is meant to be lived in community and in family. For those families at home, how are you living your faith differently right now within those walls that you were not before the CDC, as well as governmental guidelines and directives, were provided us, instituted. You see, when it comes to our faith, no one goes it alone. We cannot allow the despair or the duress that St. Thomas experienced before seeing Jesus. We cannot allow that to overpower us. Jesus will always overcome if we allow him. No one goes it alone. We're more than spiritual. We have the Catholic faith, our religion. It's our faith. Yes, we can become lost. It is like having a GPS system in your car, but you cannot connect through the towers or the correct satellites. In other words, without religion, we do not actually know who is leading us. In the church, the body of Christ, the body of Christ of which we are part of, Jesus Christ completes us. The Acts of the Apostles are first in the first letter of St. Peter today, and in the Gospel of John, these are all not simply letters or books meant to be read. They are meant to be lived. 
to be lived. Do you now see? See with the eyes of faith, as we do today, here at the Easter season of 2020. The church of 2020 is to be the same as that early church, a community of love and peace. The Prince of Peace has given us that opportunity. He's given it to us through the vertical way, and we share it the horizontal way with one another. A community of love and peace, striving for the good of all. For as we are reminded time and time again, only Jesus Christ can complete us. Do you see? Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father through our all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, who are spent for our salvation, came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, the divine the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism into the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With trust in God's love and mercy, we make our prayer to Him. For the church throughout the world, through her teachings and witness, many may embrace the truth of Jesus. We praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in authority in government and commerce, that they may make their decisions based on prayerful discernment of God's will. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that many men and women may seek to serve God and his church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians throughout the world, unable to celebrate with full joy the season of the Lord's resurrection, that this time may become for them one of peace and freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those afflicted by the current pandemic, for the ill and those who care for them, for the unemployed and those affected in other ways, that God may give them strength and grace in the face of suffering, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that they may be admitted to the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our own needs and intentions, and for those who have asked for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, hear the prayer we make in our weakness, and in your mercy, give us what we truly need through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession, your name and by baptism, they may attain an unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you. Above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, restored our life. Therefore, Overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> of your Lord Jesus Christ and our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, 
John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Alexander, 
Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with light, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Thank you. 
pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, before the final blessing, just a word, of course, to make sure we continue to double our efforts, our resolve to be holy, keep safe, and keep healthy. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now, now and forever. forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who Amen. made heaven Amen. and earth. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia.